the land of Israel is a land of incredible geographic complexity. I'm Jack Beck. I'm a Bible geographer, and I'm here in the Holy Land in order to explore all the geographical differences that this land has to offer. And I'm doing it as a Bible teacher because in order to best understand our Bible and the stories that only fit in the places that they occur, um, we're gonna go on a trip that visits all sorts of different places in this region. In this season, we're gonna have a chance to visit Mount Hermon, and like the water, we're gonna flow through the Sea of Galilee, Jordan River to the Dead Sea. I am going to show you a way of thinking about and reading your Bible you may never have experienced before. We're gonna make the Bible's geography meaningful. Every Bible reader who has not come to the Holy Land has a picture of what this place is like. Some people picture it as a place of deserts or a place of lakes. Man, there's just, there's just nobody who pictures the Holy Land looking like this. We're in one of the most unique places in the Holy Land. I feel like I don't even have to tell you that, right? I mean, look at this. We're standing next to a ski lift. This is Mount Hermon. There is no place in the Holy Land that resides at a higher elevation. We're at 9,232 feet. Now, that's two and a half times higher than any other mountain in the Holy Land. It's not a, a pointy alpine mountain like this, but a sprawling ridge line that runs for 28 miles. And because it's so high in elevation and because it's so massive in size, it creates its own weather. It rains more here than any place else. Three times more rain than happens in Jerusalem. We're at Mount Hermon a place that has a very significant set of stories. Stories that stretch from the Old Testament through the Gospels when Jesus visited this place. I love the chartreuse color of these cards. It really matches my jacket, so, so I feel so color coordinated. Now, people living here in Bible times they did not ski, right? Uh, and in fact, they didn't live up here. It's, it's too high, it's too cold during the winter. They lived where all the snow melt goes, at the, at, the, at the bottom of these ridges. What, what an incredible view and what an incredible space. This is Mount Hermon and its snow melts and moves down into this wonderful basin below us and then flows through the upper Jordan River all the way down to the Sea of Galilee that I can see just peeking out around the corner here. It's just no wonder that long before Abraham and Sarah came into this land, there were Canaanites living in this place and they had a name for this mountain. They called it Baal Hermon, that's Hebrew for the place we worship Baal. And that suggests that this wonderful place had a big problem. People of all times and really of all places have a passion to understand the natural world that surrounds them. Rainfall, soil fertility, these sorts of things. Think of those who were living in the ancient past. They didn't have modern science. And for the pagan world that did not have revelation from the one true God, their best shot at explaining the otherwise unexplainable was to associate those mysterious phenomena with the pagan gods that were part of their context. You needed a whole pantheon of deities in order to understand the world in which you live. The idea, the very notion that there would be just one god is unthinkable. 
If you said there was only one God, you would surrender your ability to understand the world in which you live. I, I have some sympathy for the pagans who are dealing with that concept. I'm standing before this magnificent otherworldly cliff face. I look like I am in a place that is the home of the gods. In the ancient world, as early as the third century BC, we have sanctuaries being physically built into the base of Mount Hermon. What I'm about to show you is a sanctuary to the god Pan. And get this, the god of natural resources. In this place that is simply burgeoning with water and greenery and all the ecological richness that Mount Hermon delivers at its base, is it surprising given the pagan mindset that they've established a sanctuary here to their nature god whom they believed was responsible for it all. Welcome. Welcome to the home of Pan, the temple at Caesarea Philippi that existed here since the third century BC. And it's the place the pagan world would come to give thanks to Pan for the great gift he gave them, the gift of the natural resources all around us. But here's the problem. Gods like Pan and Baal aren't real and never have been. So the people who lived here missed the creator behind those wonderful blessings. The question is, have we? Mount Hermon hosts many stories that show us how easy it is to get God wrong. I can really resonate with that. Even though I've read my Bible through and, and studied it professionally, I know how easy it is to get God wrong. Society pulls me away from a correct understanding of God. And, and even with him, when I go through troubles in life, I begin to distort God's true identity. And all of that makes me wonder, how is ancient Israel going to do when they become the landlords of this place? Join me for our next episode, and we'll explore that question together.